What's going on you guys? Today there's an astronomical event happening. That's right, Ezra Aderhold, Aderhold is joining the channel for the front nine of the Jonesboro Open. Who's this presented by? Do you know the official name? Uh, Westside. The Jonesboro Open. No, it's the, okay. It's the Play It Again. It's a Play It Again Spaltz. Jonesboro Open presented by Westside, I believe. That's wow, right. I'm shocked. You heard it here first. We're going to do front nine over on my channel, back nine on Ezra's channel. We have the solar eclipse happening today during our round. So hopefully that lighting shows up for you guys. We might even have to play a hole with our eclipse glasses on. If you want to support Ezra or myself, look at the description below. All, that de all the details will be there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let's get up to the new hole one. Ezra's going to break it down for you. Oh. Do you, do you usually, is it, no, you probably just zoom post. Uh, zoom is right here. Oh, fancy boy. Okay, never mind. We can zoom then. And it's, um, it's not going to make it shaky. Yeah, it's like, this is what um, Tony Miller has, or had when I got it at least. Yeah. Um, it is adjustable, so like the, the harder you press, the faster it goes. Um, but. Oh, right, you live? We're live. All right, hole one here at Jonesboro. They have gone through a quals redesign. They've kind of rerouted the entire property and mixed up the holes, so it's gonna be a completely different feel. Hole one now is one of the more difficult holes on the course. We got a downhill 520 foot pole three. There was a little bit of a creek um, OB area in front of the basket, a forest off to the right, kind of a dead zone off to the left and a basket kind of mounted on that uh, log. Very difficult. It's going to be kind of interesting to see uh, what people think of having this as hole one. I kind of missed the old hole one, but I'm going to go kind of stable onyx. It's going to be windy all weekend as well. So that's going to also affect things, but let's see if we can get close. Ezra letting us use his fancy camera, so you guys are gonna get a little upgrade, hopefully. <coughs> wow, this guy didn't even warm up. He's just gonna well, park it with an onyx. Yeah, that's on. my, I should have made it, but it was my first <laughs> shot of the day, so that's my excuse. Easy. <laughs> um, let's go. Let's go a little flip your onyx and see if maybe this. Is the, I kind of like the more stable one though, because I can kind of force it out to the left on Annie, and I can kind of trust it to kind of hold instead of just like bowling over to the right because yeah. going right is, is also the easiest way to come up short and go OB. Sure. So, and you can play the stable one in multiple wins, I feel like. Yep, exactly. Now, I don't think that's going to come enough to the right. Whoops. Ricky camera guy. I really wish there was like a spike hyzer out, but maybe only Anthony can go for that. So <laughs> not today for me. Unfair. <laughs> All right, Connor, what are you ripping on this hole? You know, I'm gonna throw two layups first. That's my tradition, you know, throw, hey. throw two baby shots. And yeah, then, yeah, uh, yeah. And then I'm gonna go with my Warbird. Oh, sick. Because, you know, I don't... I feel like you always have cool stamps, man. Cool, uh, cool dies and stuff. I got a couple cool Pokemon ones in the bag yeah. right now. Nice. That one almost kind of got there. <laughs> It's my yeah. tradition. If I haven't thrown a shot, you know, I'm not as young as Ezra. I gotta at least throw two discs before I go ripping it. All right. All right, 520 downhill. A little bit of right to left. I'm also gonna have to kind of drag this one over like Ezra was talking about. Because this disc does want to fade if you give it enough time. Stabling out on me, but honestly, yeah. anything safe, close-ish is, is fine here. The fans, the fans can clap for that, I think. Yeah, claps. Yeah. Big claps. <laughs> you got something in this? Wow. Okay. Yeah, there's something kind of. Wow, this is nice. There's actually a little bit of a window here if I can have like a, a little bit of a rising putt. Yeah. This is going to be a common spot. Short left on this hole. Not everyone will have a look, though. Oh, no. Hit the window. Yep. Yeah, this left side is, a lot of people end up on this left side because they want to avoid that right side and then you can get pretty dicey. Yeah, this left side brought us that timeless Casey White yeah. highlight, but yeah. Uh, yeah, not everyone's that lucky, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as, as you can see, this gap at the very end is so, we're well, 460 feet away from the tee box trying to hit a 20 foot wide gap. It's very difficult. It's a cool hole. Not a great hole one in my opinion, but it'll be exciting if people do hit it. Oh. Yeah, definitely on the difficult side. It'll be a 
confidence booster for a few, but for most, it'll just be a whole survival. All right, let us know what you guys think. Do you guys like like really tough whole ones, or do you like more of an easy kind of like wide open Paul floor to where people can kind of just get off the false tee, everyone can kind of clap, and then kind of move on? What do you like more to start? Nice. Squeaked it in there. Paul's not bad on this hole. Yeah, Paul will play fine. I think it'll probably have like a maybe like 12% birdie rate somewhere somewhere in the low low side. Yeah, especially with the wind. Oof. All right. Well, <laughs> Ezra I mean, was asking whether he should even put that out. It's so close, but that, that proves to you why we always play it out, you guys. <laughs> I don't. I don't have any shame. These baskets are actually really bad. These are probably. <laughs> The Walsh baths we play on, right? I, I mean, no longer the... have to talk quietly about them. Huh? They are in the worst category. They're baskets. horrible. I mean, these are, they had prodigies last year, and those were bad. And these, these are just Walsh. don't stop the speed of the putt very much. And some people might say putt was better touch, but like, what happens when it's 25 mile per hour of wind that we'll see out here? You don't want to putt with touch, you want a firm right. fire and putt. I just think a disc, yeah, I don't. <laughs> they're horrible, they're horrible, they're horrible <laughs> baskets. I don't know how they. You know, it'd no be nice. Minced. It'd be nice to have baskets to catch, but that's not like that's not an uncommon occurrence to have a good putt like that. Love the authenticity from this guy today. Hole two is a bit of a flip up from what was last year's hole 15 teeing area. It used to be easiest hole on the course, 275. Chip Heiser to the left there. Now it's straight ahead at 360, playing maybe 20 feet up the hill. So it's going to add a little bit of distance there. Bit of trouble on the right, making you play a pretty straight line at it. You can't just crash a Heiser. I'm gonna go back to the Warbird. Let's try to get it there quick. Oh, it's too low. It was the width I was looking for, but way too low. Ezra will probably go Onyx. I think I might, yeah. You might know my bag better than I do, Connor. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, this whole so it's pretty decent. I like that. I like the. I like the change. I think last year's hole was, was too easy. I don't think we ever need like a gimme body. I would like to see some OB on this hole somewhere. I think, but add to it. But still a good change in the right direction. Yeah, maybe like if you're gonna have a hole like last year's, I feel like you need out of bounds. Right. Little island. Little putt. As we're fighting the fade with the fairway. Oh my God. Maybe it's a passion. Do you usually just throw one field channel? Well, for practicing, multiple. man, you do what you want. <laughs> what does Ezra say, y'all? It's always a passion. It is, but I do have a fun, a fun route that I don't know if a lot of people are gonna uh, try. Ooh. But uh, and I'm going low. I'm going low. A little cutting roller action. Show off the skills. Where is it? Basket. Go to the basket. Oh my God, wow. Yeah, you guys. Uh, wow. <laughs> I'm beautiful too with that. <laughs> okay. Makes you think, hey, something to think about. Something to think Good about. Shot. You know, I need another. All right, I'm gonna try out my version of the Onyx. This one's the Wrangler. Just got this new stamp done. Pretty sweet. Nice stamp. It's a good flight though. Nice. Yeah, maybe I should go to that if the wind's down. I like it. They go to your channel for the... <laughs> the sulcus. The rowdiness. <laughs> <laughs> we'll both clowns over there. That's fine. We know what we are. <laughs> oh, okay. I got another little window putt over here. Apparently that's going to be my theme today. No, it's not. I'll just turf this one a little bit. Ooh, we tried. I think... Uh, might go to that Wrangler if the wind's down. I can just play a little bit more directly at the basket. I don't have to test these trees that I was telling myself that you probably shouldn't have to test anyway, so. Uh, see. It's always a pro play to match the baskets with your putters, and that's what we're doing this week. Yes, but it's also a pro play just to shoot blue for birdies, so we're also doing that every week, so. That's true. Also, as much as I complained about the basket on the last hole, if it does hit dead center two inches above the band, the cage, like right here, it should never spit out. So, yeah, pro tour it's kind of on us, I guess. Easy. <laughs> All right, hole three is pretty straightforward. 324 foot, pole three, 
down the hill, up the hill, off to the right. The only danger really is the tree bunker just right of the basket. So you got to swing it wide and then spike in. And the basket is actually pretty close to that, those trees as well. So you do kind of have to stall it ideally. I'm going to go Nuke OS forehand and uh, I don't know, see what happens, I guess. I do want to take a moment just to thank everyone in Jonesboro who's worked on this course over the last year because I can tell from last year to this there's a lot of clearing that's been done and all the bunkers are a lot more playable yes and less uh full of ticks because of that so thank you guys there you go yeah this is one of those distances I think for both me and Ezra we could go spur raptor type disc but I also am going to the faster disc just because I know I'll be able to play it in multiple different wind directions and it's more likely to have a little sharper kind of fade at the end. Mm. And this one's really tucked up to those trees, like you said. Tombstone, alpha plastic. Holy crap. First forehand of the day, y'all. Let's, uh, let's rerun that one. <laughs> Maybe I should have went to the, the nine speed. I'll go Chupacabra here. I just sawed that one off. That's also a little tight. That was close. I needed that line with the first disc. Yep. Roller battle? Roller battle. I like it. As they're calling for the roller battle, I'm gonna go tumbleweed. This one's you guys gonna got be good names, honestly. Like yeah, I got This I is a perfect. This is a perfect. Every time you pull a disc out, you say something like, "That's pretty. Sweet. That's a pretty cool name." Tumbleweed for roller. It's perfect. Yes. The issue is how are we gonna have to land it before or after? Try to get the jump over the creek here. Let's see. Oh, that's perfect. Wow, maybe I'm just throwing a roller, you guys. Connell. That's my best shot. Every hole is <laughs> Every a roller. Every hole is a roller now. <laughs> Every I love it. A roller. Oh. All right, I got Avenger SS. Ezra putting me on the lines. I didn't think I needed, but I'm here for it. <laughs> we got to show you guys what's up, you know? We had to do this for, uh, there was a Joe Mess challenge we did like three years ago, I think. And we had to throw a roller on this whole far. Just kind of fun. It's kind of a fun shot. Were you intending to land before or after the creek? That's the question. After, Ooh, after, after for sure. Oh, it's gone. He's headed to the next hole, y'all. Connor, you got me. CTP. Well done. I'm the roller king, y'all. Congrats. Tumbleweed. <laughs> but this is a good putt to practice right here because if you do saw it off, you're once again going to have a window putt. Apparently, that's a thing out here. They like their windows. Ezra's going to give you a better view so you can see the window I'm looking at. Here we go. Because he's yeah. a true pro. Sometimes there are little gaps. Yeah, this is not, I mean, it's obstructed, but definitely there. Oh, we got it. Dialing in my window putts. Oh, even off nice. the tree. Let's go. That's a great Player putt. Player B got that. it. Oh, my roller curled up. Tough spot. Let's see if we can cash it. Tumbleweed birdie. Oh. I was just right about these baskets, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny how that it just like stuff which recycles like oh yeah I'm, i told myself this last last year yeah most would recommend missing long if you are going to miss here because then you have a wide open putt like ezra had to look at here i'm one for two on every basket that's crazy and those are both bad putts don't forget ezra's roller is somewhere way back there i got the ctb never forget all right, hole four is going to be, I believe, old hole nine from the original layout. Same hole. Uh, tight gap off the tee. Kind of valleys out and rises back up on the second shot. Very particular second shot, though. You have to get really far off the tee to access it. And it's hard to find yourself in circle one on this hole without getting a little bit of luck through that, those late branches. I'm going to go bang off the tee. Try to push it towards that lone tree out there in the open. If you can beat that one left or right, you feel... Pretty good. First throw at this bayonet, let's see how it's flying. <laughs> Little hyzer out the hand, Ooh, stands up. Spicy. Nice shot. Thank you. It's a great gap hit. I'm gonna go nuke up the middle. I want, I want as much distance as possible. I used to be able to go right side and just go spike hyzer, but the forecast is, is calling for a left to right wind 
wall left to right headwind, I believe. And so. he hasn't been in the gym, so he can't do that anymore, yeah. apparently. <laughs> uh, but it's just, it's going to knock the disc down and keep it right. It's going to be kind of just uh, an impossible play, but so this up the middle play is going to have to be, have to be the go-to, I think. If you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to try the right side play when I come here, you're not Eagle, you're not Ezra, you're not AB, so just don't. That'll that do just great. fine. Pipe but job. <laughs> what if I threw a roll off? Ooh, <laughs> I see a theme here and I don't hate it, y'all. Ooh, that one's, you're gonna see that Keep one watching again. it, keep watching it. Get out there. Keep watching it, Connell. Hmm. Didn't see it, but I was expecting to. It's perfect. It's gonna be off to the right side. I've got a, an easy, like a, like a straight gap into I'll the- I'll show them how it's done right here. Into the basket. Again, it's just, it's- I'm gonna it's try to like hyzer flip it, get it to land way out there. I have cut. been trying this a lot actually, and I have, the key is to keep it as low as possible. Like you have to try to match the hill. Okay. That's what I found. If that lands cleanish, oh no, yeah. caught a branch. It does work, but it's like, it has to just like be so left side. That's just a bad influence, y'all. <laughs> All right, this is a pretty, pretty ideal spot here. You can definitely get further up the hill. But I have a chance to squeak through that last oak tree, give myself a putt. I feel like you need to get a little bit lucky to park this one. And it's a matter if that filters through the branch or not, and it doesn't. Well, I tried it. The right shot at this position off the tee is probably a flex forehand. But I think I'm just going to be a coward and go spy casual through the tree and take my chances anyway. <laughs> you know, well, low high on. a coward by himself. I don't know. He's. Oh, let's try the flex for him. I suppose. Oh, what should I even throw? I guess cap right up. It's a tough, it's still a tough shot. Oh, same spot as the other shot. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of just throw a good tee shot and then kind of hopefully get lucky through the tree, I feel like, for most people. Yeah, maybe we should work, try to get ourselves to the right side of this tree here so we can actually have a more clean forehand line. Wait, how would you do that, Connell? Would you throw a roller off the tee? You probably would if you're Ezra. I'll throw it from you. That's actually a really good spot. Thanks. Connell, what do you got to say about this shot? Ezra's figuring stuff out. He's he knows that discs are meant to fly, but they also roll well. So I just yeah, man. I used to play golf, so it's like I want I want to get the disc on the ground and just let, see that baby roll. He's getting older, you know. You got to use the rollers more as you get older, and, exactly. and, and you got, uh, yeah, gotta, it's just you got to put the pride aside, man, and just you know embrace who you are. I just the forehand from here. You know that tree's not even in the way. Same spot. <laughs> All right, stay tuned for more tips, guys. We got a whole, we got a whole course to play. What uh, do you guys think? Five? What, what's? How short is too short on the end seams, you guys? I'm wearing five inches right now. Anything beyond that? Is that too much? I'm gonna say zero inches. <laughs> go, uh, go full thong. I think. I mean, that's what, that's what we need on two. It's off. not against the rules, is it, Ezra? Maybe we should oh. work on getting that. We could go sleeveless polo. We can prove a point. Zero. We could just go underwear on sleeveless polo. I think we could. There's actually... no rules against speedos, you guys. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, the intimidation factor would be insane. Like, how is how is the competition supposed to play against that? That'd be so distracting. Um, anyway, this is the tree we're trying to beat. Uh, we kind of all of our shots kind of ended up hitting the tree and just dropping straight down. The the pure play might be just trying to play short of it and ending up 30 feet left and taking a putt and just taking this uh, kind of flukiness, I guess, out of play. Or even um, as I look at it, I feel like we should maybe even try to test like, I don't know, it gets it gets scary testing the backside because we have that pond down there. Right. But I feel like it's a little thinner testing like the trunk side versus the short side. So trying to get to the trunk of this tree maybe and right. getting lucky. I could see that, yeah. I wish you could like skip through here, but I don't think this is really that viable. Yeah, I think you can. Oh, we saw that stepper working last week again, and it's still here. Stepper's back, baby. I uh, I didn't really go to the stepper a ton last season because I started doing like a little, like a little modified jump putt thing, and uh, I think that is, I think that having the the step putt, like a, a pure step putt back, is going to be huge. 
And now he has Super both tools off. when he needs it, when he's got to go split stance. Oh my god, look at this yeah, big old spider. I feel like I can just put so much more pace with the step putt. Large jumping spider on uh -huh. my disc. He might be my new pet. Uh -huh. my new oh, 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 oh. kind of scary, but kind of cool. <laughs> Fun to look at, don't, don't want him on me. <laughs> You could be a pet for my little bonsai trees. You could live in there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got to straddle out pretty far here. See, these shorts are fine, Connor. Those are great. You're right. See, if, 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 they can, if they can hold up to this kind of straddle, then we're good. I've been kind of liking from this position just like a little left foot step, but yep. I don't know if it's, if it's worth it from this wide of a stance. Oh. Yeah, I do the same thing though with that little, it's like a half a half jump, half step putt kind of thing. Well, yeah, it just kind of helps follow through. I feel and then like. it helps me keep my, I know I have my live foot down and I don't feel like I'm kind of testing the rules like some players like to do, you know. I'm right here, dude. What the heck? No, not you. <laughs> Other guys. <I> know. <laughs> it's so simple, but it's nuanced, you know, that's. It is nuanced, yeah. It is. There's no OB on this hole. Hole number five, 360 feet. Very challenging hole still. There was a little bit of a log in the way to force you to the left side or over it. We've got a green, which I think is the, the coolest part about this hole. The way it's sloped, you kind of, you can kind of throw a backhand straight into the left side of the hill and typically get like an Annie reaction off towards the basket. So I'm gonna throw my passion and hopefully have it flip up just a little bit, hit that left patch, then skip. Some people will throw forehands. It's also, if you don't hit the hill, it can also be easy to kind of go past the basket and uh, that can also be tricky. The green's also a mound, so the putting can be dicey, but Let's see what we can do here. Also, the low ceiling I should mention as well. Oh, I threw too much highs off. Well, got the anti skip though, about two feet. <laughs> Let's throw one more. I might, I might disc up to uh, my flippy raptor. I think when it's windy, this might be the play as well. Okay, that's a better line, but I toned it a little bit. Ooh, that's gonna be money. If it's far enough, Ooh. Deep. yeah, that'll be fine. I wanted that to be a little bit more high, a little bit more left, and then get that hill reaction, but I kind of just flew it to the basket. I'm gonna throw my Dose X with just a sip of hyzer on it. You know what I'm talking about? Wow, I like that. Should stand up. Yeah, I kind of matched Ezra's first line. Decent shape, but way too far left. That's a death putt there. We'll try one more. Yep. Um, maybe go to the Wrangler. This one got the little Pokeball stamp. This one I should be able to hit flat, kind of drag it over. Well, we made good adjustments here, y'all. And we That's threw good. red discs, apparently, are the ones. And we're both deep. Perfect. Whoops. Good little skip off that hill though, just what you're looking for. Yeah, you'll take a long miss here. You, you committed and you threw a good line. So This is a layup all day, but I'm gonna run it because only because it's the eclipse day, you know? So floppy, so bad. Yeah, this is that range where unless it's like final round and you're trying to put a move on, you don't really feel like you have to run it. No, definitely with the, with the drop off behind it. It's much better to just kind of stay alive and not make any stupid mistake. Mine though, I don't know, I'm about 15 feet closer and I feel like I gotta run it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Plus, practice days, we can always run everything, no consequences, so why yep. not? Should I try the Ezra stepper? No. Yay. Maybe I should, let's see. Okay, okay. Had the line. I tried. One more. The Kyle jump ball. Easy. Perfect. Got that disc in the hand again, dude. It's a go-to. It is. Hole six, uh, same hole as last year's hole nine, I believe. 560, kind of an S shape. You gotta play a straight shot that fades at the end. And they've cleared out the little landing zone pocket there quite a bit. And stalling forehand is typically how shots into the green are gonna be played, even from players who don't throw tons of forehand. It's just a steep little ante if you try to go backhand. So I'm gonna go Warbird, rip it with a little bit of hyzer. Yeah. 
No, but it might be a bit straight. Yeah, a little straighter than ideal, but honestly, that'll that'll play. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do on this hole. I might. I've been messing around with this more aggressive play and going kind of like over top and trying to get way left. So yeah. I'm going to try that out, see if it works. It's kind of tough with this run up, too. Definitely. Ideally, it, I could stall. Not only I, is it kind of short off the back, there's a little jump up, but it's. I don't know what, how many degrees of uphill it is. It feels right. like four to six degrees of up, enough yep. to like really slow your feet. Yeah, that's a good point. It just throws the timing. It makes that front foot hit earlier than it used to. Yeah, I didn't. I'm sorry, that was lazy camera work, you guys. But well, it was a lazy shot. Oh so. my god, that thing stayed in the air forever. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I think I would need. I think if I had right to left wind, then it would be a good play. But it's going to probably be, it'll be headwind, I believe. So kind of out of the equation, going cap wrap and kind of trying to match Connell's shot, maybe get a little bit left, just kind of take the low line. Yeah, we're facing a little bit of left to right wind today. Kind of holding the fade off. Well, that'll be fine. Just got to be in the open. Don't want to mess with the trees. Like Connell said, got a little spike chip highs all right here. The main thing is you can't be short on this upshot because the, the trees are kind of dead. Being long is kind of okay, but being under the basket is uh, obviously ideal. Football, y'all saw it. <laughs> huh. Deep? I don't know. No, definitely not deep. It hit the, it hit the tree short, but then I didn't hear anything else, so it was a bad shot. Oh, it was deep, Connor. You're right. Wow. I'm about to say, only hearing it the, the initial touch, I guess, it felt like it had to be. Yep, I don't All right, do. Chupacabra coming in. It's actually the perfect disc for okay. this little type of shot. That needs to just stall fade, right? Definitely push this one further towards the back wall of trees than you'd like to. Ideally, 30 feet less or so will open your angle. That's so spiky, y'all. <laughs> I don't think I needed that tall, but uh, it's a clean putting window up the hill. I rarely get to collab with you since we're, we both, I feel like, are, are busy. You always got your obligation, and then yep. no one wants to film twice in a week, I feel, for the most part. Like, maybe little videos, but... It, gets, it, gets, it, gets, it can get to be a lot, for sure. Yeah. All right, shallow C2, right to left wind, should hold the disc up. Got it. There. there we go. Nice putt. Dead center, that putt catches. Yep. Ezra squeaked by the corner for the easy three. Definitely one of the holes that if you're on a hot round out here, you're likely gonna birdie this hole. All right, hole seven. This is one where you can kind of let the big dog eat. Blast a disc as long as you can, as far as you can. About a 655 foot paw fall over the OB Creek, marked off beautifully with stakes. I, I love OB stakes. That's like one of the best things. It makes it look so professional, I feel like. 100%. Then you have an uphill approach shot and then kind of a downhill, I guess, end towards the green. The basket is on a slope, which makes it very difficult. You cannot see the basket from almost any tee shot. Uh, that's about all I got to say. Let's go. Let's, let's blast a nuke here and see if we can get. Show the people where you're throwing. Somewhat up on the hill. I got the two all shoes nuke. See how she flies. <sighs> Z flex plastic. Throwing rollers, throwing soft plastic. This guy's maturing. But he's still got all the power of a young lad. Clears it, pure hyzer, no worries. Safe. I didn't tone it, but it's still safe. <clears throat> this hole also gets kind of dicey when it's wind. Yeah. Because that, I think they, it feels like they moved that OB line up it's, the hill a little bit. It's definitely another like long. 15, 20 feet longer to, to clear it this year. Yeah. We do have some left to right tail right now, pretty ideal wind. Shout out to my guy. Matt Williams hooked me up with this Founders Bayonet. I only threw it like two times yesterday, so still kind of figuring it out, but it does have some decent stability. Should be the perfect option here. Just jam it flat, trust it to do its thing. Yeah, dude, nice line. Yeah, like Ezra said, if, if the wind picks up, I'll probably go to the Warbird instead of the Bayonet here. Uh, but today we have a pretty idealistic conditions and we're getting closer to that total eclipse y'all it's feeling kind of weird out here man i don't know what it <laughs> it's is y'all <laughs> yeah, i'm just gonna say it i might have had to play a little more flex but i outdrove ezra you got me you got me no, I'm, 
I'm not embarrassed. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> you know. Um, if I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose to the best. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got a uphill blind shot, like I said. It's good. It's about, what is it? 50 feet right of that big tree you can see. 40 yeah. feet right of it. Yeah, I found that this big tree on the right here actually is about 75 feet from the basket. Okay. So, so I'm, kind of, I'm gonna try to throw a backhand and uh, hold the green somehow. It's, it's, a, it's a tricky little approach shot. Such a unique hole. Definitely not many up shots like this throughout the season. Maybe the only, the only one that we'll see just like this. A lot of times you can kind of, ooh, that's beautiful. I think it's good, but again, we won't know until we get up there. It's like we've played enough golf. A lot of times you can kind of envision a different shot on this on the shot you're throwing but this is one of those shots that you just probably haven't really thrown something like it in a while right and i'm also going to go to that little turning putter shot with my d2 penny putter because this one will grip the ground is that abraham lincoln that is abraham himself wow and abe we trust let's see if we best. can put it up there oh i like that yeah I feel like I'm high left and Ezra's just down to the right, but we should both be pretty close. Walk of shame for Ezra. Down to the bottom. This hill is steep, y'all. <sighs> Couldn't hold the green, guys. I'm I'm 40 feet outside now. Uphill putt into the headwind. <laughs> Gotta make the putt. Oh, you love to see it sit there, though. Yeah. I have seen some nasty rollaways on this hole. So yeah, to have one band sit or is... cage on this one, I feel like you have about a 60% chance to just go bye bye. Roll test. Oh, that's tried. pretty good. <laughs> band. No, he's too good. All right. Wow. My percentages are getting pretty good. Thrown out. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good second shot right there. Kind of. That's what you want on this hole. Yeah, a stress-free putt on a hole like seven is just gonna not make you use that mental will that you have throughout the round, you know? Yeah, good point. Hole eight's another one of those unique holes that doesn't really show on camera how difficult it can be. A lot of people take this right side, try to play a steep hyzer that really hugs the corner to fight their way back up that left to right slope. Hard to get yourself to beat that wood line edge at about 40 feet with that line, um, especially if there's left to right wind. You've seen a lot of people start to kind of take this straight gap here, whether it's with a flex forehand or a straight backhand. And I think I'm gonna try that one today. Going with the Charlie Wrangler, looking to get a little bit of left to right movement and have it straighten out. Oh. Well, there's about the worst miss you can have through that gap, so it's good to see. I'm gonna try one more down the traditional side with my Warbird. You really gotta get the nose up a little bit here. It's one of the keys. So I'll go with a little bit of, a little bit less, less kind of wrist downward cock than we're used to. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be testing that right side edge. We'll see if it's a clean look or not. Yeah, kind of, I've been liking this up the middle play as well. Um, my biggest gripe with the right side is that it's been, it's, it's kind of tough to, you know, stay right of that tree and then not float with that right side kind of wall of trees like you talked about. And then one of the big old things too is sometimes even a good shot will hit that hillside and then kind of spin back and roll down the hill into the woods anyway. So. I've been messing around with this left side and I've been liking it as well. Obviously it does take that gap, um, kind of puts a gap in play, but let's see if I can get an onyx up there. Oh, it's a little high. I like the line though. Yeah. I should be putting. I might be a little short because of the height. Um, let's take the let's take the right side as well and see what we see what we get. I've got my oval stable venom. Yeah, that's too wide, I think. Yeah, I got so close to being good. It sounded but, okay, but yeah, yeah, it's gonna be pushing that right side and then it'll be an uphill putt, which I guess is kind of ideal anyway, but it's a tricky little hole. I like, the, like those two options. 
All right, this is about as ideal as it gets up that right side, especially with some left to right wind. There we go. But like as I said, a lot of times you're kind of losing speed as you come up the hill here. And so you get the soft check roll that just stands up, goes off into this tree line. Two different ways to birdie here. Ezra parked it up the left side for y'all. Hey, let's go. We'll take that. All right, guys, this is probably the saddest part of the whole course, in my opinion. They have removed hole 17 to uh, take advantage of that space for the tournament central. And now this is what we're left with as hole number nine. We have kind of brought an old short tee shot with land. Got a pull three, 350 feet, downhill, dog leg right, hazard off to the left side. I think it's actually a very, like a pretty solid pull three, but anytime you cut a pull four out and turn into a pull three, it's kind of a sad day. I'm gonna go forehand, try to throw it kind of at that evergreen tree and then have it skip off to the right and up to the basket and uh, hopefully get close. And if I'm throwing cap and drag ball, it should finish before it gets a chance to go too, too long into that hassle. Oh, it's way too short though. Mm. Yeah, I needed to throw a little bit flat off, but I have found success with the forehand. Yeah, I noticed this one's kind of touchy. It feels like you can't just whack flat on an overstable disc. You kind of have to play a hyzer that slightly stands up, push towards that hazard and then fade in front. Yeah. You'll also see some big arcing backhands, but those also have some branches to deal with late. I'm gonna go my slow poke spur, same kind of line as Ezra at those little junipers down there. Make sure to maintain hyzer out of the hand. Hope for some ground play. Okay, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. I like that. Nice and low. Oh, but then I hit in the hazard and stayed in it, so. Looks like a straight skip instead of a right skip. Yeah, maybe I'll have to go with the chupacabra. I just put in a second one. So now I have two chups in the bag. This one's a little bit flatter on top and also is a little bit straighter than my other one. So if I can throw that same line, this one should fade harder out at the end. And maybe it's not as nuanced as I thought and you just got to blast over stable. Oh, wow. Hmm. No. What about nuanced. the backhand line? What about the, the pretty backhand, backhand you're right. line? I know anything. some people are going to be throwing back in on this hole, and it's a beautiful Especially line. if they already purchased one of my Tour Series penny hey. putters and used code GLOVER20 to save 20% hey. at hotstardisc.com, man. Follow the links below, y'all. Or OTB Disc, you know, they, they got some sweet Lone Star stuff, and they got some of mine and Ezra's merch hanging out. Sure do. And that is going to be CTP, I believe. Oh, that one made it. Let's go. It's a fun line. I don't know. I might have to try it. That's nice. All right. This is a player D figured out to go <laughs> with a tombstone. Just ensure some skip. I think it's uh, it's going to be hard to go like super long here. So I think the faster disc will help to get some ground play at the end of the flight because you're likely going to be hitting the ground before you get to the basket and ensuring you can get some skip will probably be smart here. Yeah, agreed. Well, my nuclear ass ended up pretty good. I'm about 15 feet, but my, my cap wrap was a little bit short. Yeah, I stepped into one of these little cutout things on hole, the old hole one, and it was way deeper than I expected, so I gotta be careful this time. <laughs> Plus the next three days, it's supposed to be money. It's supposed to be raining, so this will be a little river now, oh, and we're gonna whole, have some of these wet low spots. Be, yeah. This whole thing might be a pond. Last year was bad. It yeah. was so muddy. Last year, anything circles edge short in this whole area was just... Oh, yeah. No jump putts. All right, you guys. Sad to see y'all go. This is the end of our front nine at the Disc Side of Heaven for the Jonesboro Open presented by Westside Discs. We had Ezra Aderhold join us today. It's been a pleasure to have him back on the channel. It's been a minute. Uh, always fun playing with Ezra. Getting to hear his insights. He's gotten so good on the camera, too, that he's just... He's always letting it come. And he's, he's a very authentic oh, yeah. guy, and I, and I, uh, I always love to hear how he thinks about the course and, and how he views it. It helps me to make my game plan too sometimes playing with a good player like Ezra. So thanks you guys for joining. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we're gonna have the back nine over on Ezra's channel with a solar event happening. Ezra, what's going on it's today? It's gonna be wild, man. It's starting to feel a little spooky already. I can feel that the, <laughs> the temperature, the air, it's kind of weird, the True. sun, I, it might just disappear. I don't know, thanks for having me on, Connor. It's always fun to film a video here on, here on, here on, here on wait. 
Down again? Here on again? Wait, well, how's that walk? Here on there. There we go. Yeah, now and again, here yeah, and there. I like yeah. you on the insights. And uh, stay tuned for the back now. But guys, subscribe to this channel. Kyle's putting out content all season long. Yeah, I like Ezra also like to take those little sayings and flip flop and mix them up. So, you know, what happens when we're I'm in front of the camera it. all the time? You know, we. <laughs> yeah, but after you say I'm good at the camera, it's like, we, I can't speak. We say buddy. gems. We say sometimes gems come out of the dirt, y'all. So, it's true. Don't, don't forget it. All right. See y'all soon.